Hi, my name is Doug Yulenbrock, and I am the Director of Events with FMCA. For more than half a century, FMCA has presented the best RV rallies in North America. These large events bring members from all points together for several days of learning, shopping, and good times. As the Director of Events, my goal is to send everyone home with aching feet and smiling faces. During an FMCA event, hundreds of golf carts may be on the streets and in the parking areas. While some of these carts are privately owned or rented, most are used by FMCA volunteers and staff. This includes our activity carts, one of our primary methods of on-site transportation. We expect anyone who drives a golf cart to our events to exercise caution and drive safely. Given the large number of attendees at our events, it's important that we pay special attention to golf cart safety. The majority of golf cart accidents are caused by driver error. Accidents can involve running into an attendee, hitting or being hit by another vehicle, a passenger falling off or being ejected from a cart, or golf carts hitting stationary objects. Contributing factors often involve high speed, going around blind corners, or attendees walking in front of a moving cart. To prevent injuries and accidents and to promote a safe and enjoyable experience, it's important that those driving a golf cart understand how to operate the cart safely. Anyone driving an FMCA golf cart must be at least 18 years old and hold a valid driver's license. We require anyone assigned a golf cart who, or who will be driving an activity cart to complete and sign a form asking for your name, driver's license number, and some additional information. You will be asked to complete this form and have your driver's license available at the time you pick up your golf cart. If you are an activity cart volunteer, please complete and bring the form and have your driver's license with you when you attend your volunteer meeting. The cart assigned to you is for your use only and you are responsible for that golf cart. Do not allow others to drive your cart and do not drive anyone else's cart. No one should ever operate a golf cart after they've been drinking or while taking medications that could impair their ability to drive safely. If you are on prescription or over-the-counter medication, please read the label or consult your doctor if you have any questions about whether you should be operating a golf cart while on your meds. Golf cart speed is a major concern during FMCA events. The speed limit for all golf carts at FMCA events is 5 miles per hour which is about twice the speed of normal walking pace. Resist the temptation to drive faster. Even in open spaces, such as an unparked field or empty lot, the faster a golf cart is traveling, the less control you have. An unexpected ditch or pothole can throw the cart out of control, possibly leading to a rollover or accident. When driving in high pedestrian areas, it's especially important that you stay within the five mile per hour limit and maybe even slow down a little more. Be especially aware of individuals crossing in front of your cart. Remember, in all situations, pedestrians have the right of way. While operating a golf cart is similar to driving a car, there are some big differences. First, you don't turn the key to start the engine. Instead, you will turn the key from the off position to the on or on with lights position. When you are ready to go, you simply step on the accelerator to release the brake and to start the engine. It's not unusual for the cart to jump when the brake is activated and you push on the accelerator. The transition from stop to moving isn't always a smooth one, so be prepared and make sure your passengers are prepared as well. Because the brake can be released and the cart started by stepping on the accelerator, be careful not to engage the accelerator accidentally when stopped. The best way to make sure the cart doesn't start by accident is to turn the key to the off position. This should become habit, especially for those who are driving activity carts. As folks are boarding or exiting the cart, the cart must remain stationary. By turning the key to the off position, you reduce the risk of accidentally starting the cart and having it lunge forward. Another obvious difference is that golf carts don't have doors. While this makes it easier to get in and out of the cart, it also presents a risk factor for those driving or riding. Arms and legs must be kept inside the cart whenever it's moving. 
That goes for the driver and any passengers. While it may not seem dangerous to dangle your arm or leg outside the cart, you or your passengers could potentially become injured should a limb strike an object outside the cart. Also, never try to reach out and grab something while the cart is moving. Not having doors also increases the possibility of falling out of or being ejected from the cart. A driver must be sure that all passengers are securely seated while the cart is moving. Whenever passengers are getting into the cart, ask and observe if they are securely seated, holding on and ready to go before pressing the accelerator. Do not allow anyone to get out of the cart until it has completely stopped and the parking brake is engaged. When passengers are exiting, make sure that they are completely off and have stepped away from the cart before moving again. And make sure everyone exits the cart before the next group begins to get on. Boarding and exiting the golf cart are the two areas where the majority of passenger injuries occur. Be extra cautious while this process is taking place. Do not be in a rush. It's much better that you sit for an extra five seconds while everyone is seated or fully off the cart than to take off and have someone injured because they weren't prepared for the cart to move. Another difference is stopping. Most golf carts do not have brake lights. So whenever you're following another cart, leave plenty of room, 20 to 30 feet between if possible. This should give you ample time to see that the cart in front of you is stopping and allow you time to stop as well. The final major difference is gear selection. On most carts, you have three options, forward, neutral, and reverse. There is a handle usually located on the front of the driver's seat behind where your legs would be when seated that you will rotate to the desired position. Before driving the cart, make sure the gear is set to the direction you wish to have the cart move. This is especially important when operating the cart in close quarters or around pedestrians. Most golf carts have a backup alarm when the gear selector is moved to reverse, but not always. So make sure to check so you're not surprised when you step on the accelerator. Another safety issue is trying to squeeze too many people into one cart. Never allow more passengers onto the cart as there are seats. The only exception is a small child who can ride on a passenger's lap or between two adults. Also, do not allow anyone to hang onto the side of the, or the back of the cart. This not only endangers the person trying to ride while hanging on, it disrupts the balance of the cart, making it more difficult to drive, which could lead to an accident. Also, do not stand or allow a passenger to stand inside the cart while it is moving. When driving a cart, follow the typical rules of the road. Drive on the right side when on streets or when approaching another cart in the field. Whenever you come to a blind corner or intersection, slow down and creep into the crossing, looking for oncoming vehicles in either direction. Observe all street signs. Just because FMCA is using the grounds does not mean that street signs should be ignored. Golf carts do not have turn signals. So when you are preparing to make a turn, use arm signals. Extend your left arm straight out for a left turn to signal a right turn, extend your left arm with your elbow bent and your hand pointed to the sky. Whenever turning in congested areas, make sure to check to the sides of the cart to be sure another vehicle is not attempting to pass you in the direction you are turning. Avoid distractions. While driving a golf cart, it may seem that you're moving slow enough to check your cell phone or read a map. You are not. While your attention is somewhere else, a person may dart from behind a tree or a parked vehicle may pull out in front of you. When driving the golf cart, your one and only focus should be driving the golf cart. If you need to look at something that will take your eyes and attention from the road, pull off and come to a complete stop. As you are driving your golf cart, be on the lookout for potentially dangerous situations. Should you come across a hazard, report the problem to someone with FMCA's safety or security teams to investigate and correct. Situations could include intersections that may be confusing or have poor signage, 
trip hazards around the roadways, or holes that an attendee could step into. Basically, anything you might deem a hazard. Should you be involved in any type of accident, remain calm. If someone has been injured, call or have someone else call 911. If you have a radio, use it to report the accident to security. If you are driving an activity cart, report the accident to your supervisor who will send FMCA safety and security teams to your location. Do not leave the scene until a safety or security representative has arrived. They will take a report describing the accident and collect information from those involved. Do not leave the scene until the safety and or security officials say it's okay to go. Golf carts can continue to operate in the rain, but be careful. Should there be lightning, seek cover. If you are near a building, stop the cart under cover, if possible, lock it, and get inside. If you are an activity cart driver, let your supervisor know that you are stopped and safe. Attendees may not be happy that you have stopped, but it's for your safety and theirs. Make sure to check your fuel, particularly if you are driving around quite a bit. Your cart should be full when you receive it. Should you need to get fuel, return to the golf cart pickup area. Should you run out of fuel, you will need to contact golf cart operations and have someone bring fuel to you. As FMCA's Director of Events, my job is to make sure everyone attending an FMCA rally has a great time and leaves the event safe and sound. I hope the information included in this video answered some of your questions about golf cart operations and has provided some insight into golf cart safety. I want to thank you for watching and I wish you the best on the road. See you soon.